Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Gers. I am a cosmetic and implant dentist. And in this video, we're going to be talking about all on fours and how we've improved the process. But more specifically, I want to talk about the materials of the teeth, okay? So part one was all about the surgery, how we're getting our implants in exactly the right position, how we're reducing our treatment times. And part two was about how we go about making the set of teeth. Part three, this one, is all about the materials and and material choices which I tend to use these days okay there's some which I've moved away from because of the, the issues related with those there's some which I absolutely love but these can sometimes be outside the, the budget for some people okay but there's some really cool happy medium solutions and in this video we're going to talk about those the third thing that I've started doing is really not compromising on materials whereas you know, five years ago, we used to make um, an acrylic wrap, okay, for the final set of teeth, we called it an acrylic wrap. You'd still have this titanium bar as a skeleton, but then you'd have acrylic, which is denture material, um, which is a hard plastic wrapped around this bar. And this works well in a lot of situations, but sometimes you can get teeth pinging off. And sometimes there's no obvious reason why this happens. And also, five, six years down the line, we're starting to see a lot of tooth wear on the back teeth. And as the back teeth get worn down, the front teeth then take on more load and then teeth ping off. And these bars can be refurbished, but there's a bit of a process involved because they're all handmade bars or handmade teeth on the on the bars we're never going to be able to get it exactly right so again we're going very digital with the way that we make our final set of teeth we'll have the the, the temporaries which we're happy with we'll then send them off to the lab the lab will scan these in and i use one of two materials okay we use a pmma or a gcam which is a really hard plastic material and again it's on a metal bar and it's all designed on a computer, right? This gets made and then if the technician is good, which our technicians are typically very good, they can make these teeth look really, really nice. And it's not just the teeth, it's the gums as well, okay? And that's what creates a natural looking smile. So far, we haven't even had a breakage in this um, PMMA GCAM. Okay, granted, we've only been using it a couple of years, but we, we, usually, if there's a problem with the acrylics, it happens. I'm going to say early on, right? But we, within the first four years, we will start to get a crack in the in the acrylics. But with the the GCAM so far, no problems. It's the same process that we use to make zirconia. Okay, so it's the same metal bar and the same computer design, but it's just milled out of zirconia rather than PMMA. And zirconia is a much harder material. So the lab that I work with has apparently never had a breakage with their zirconias on metal bars. A full zirconia, okay, without the metal bar, even I've had a breakage with that, but a zirconia with a metal bar inside it is pretty robust. Now, let's say in five, six years, our patients have a problem with the, the PMMA and it's worn down and it needs to be refurbished. It's a lot easier to send that computer model, the digital file that we have from when the, those teeth were originally made and have the, a new zirconia or PMMA made. Okay, and there's a the thing, you can actually upgrade it quite easily where you can't if you've got an acrylic wrap. So technologies are moving forward and they're moving you know, really nicely. Having acrylic against the gum, again, is, is not ideal. It causes a bit of inflammation, whereas if we can have a metal bar, a titanium highly polished metal bar against the gums, it's, it's a much smoother surface and our gums get much less inflammation. So as you can see, you know, there's, there's loads of developments always going on behind the scenes. We're trying to make this treatment as comfortable for our patients. We're trying to make the, the results as long lasting for our patients as well. The downside of being at the forefront is that the cost of treatment isn't going to be on the low side. But this is something I did make a conscious decision on. I could try and, you know, satisfy those people who are looking for low cost all on fours, okay? But I just can't do that without making a whole string of compromises. We have lower cost solutions. Having mini implants is hard, you know, it's like a third of the cost of um, an all on four. 
and it's a really, really good solution. But I think you know most of the people who have probably got to this point in the video will will realize that you know you can compromise on on cost. You know I can buy a bike for maybe one and a half thousand pounds. I can go on Amazon and eBay and buy a bike for a few hundred pounds. It's not the same thing. There's going to be compromises in every single component there. And if it's a bike that I can just throw away after a few years, fine. But with all on four and stuff like this, I know my patients cannot afford to get this done twice. Okay, some probably can, but nobody wants to. Okay, once you have this done, this is a very long lasting solution. I want to take every single precaution possible so that our patients don't get problems in the future. Okay, it's impossible to ensure that there are no problems and problems with all on four typically happen four, five, six years later. A problem of the teeth on the all on four is much easier to fix than a problem at implant level. Okay, and that's why I feel that using guided surgery, using the right kind of implants is really, really critical with this treatment. Every implant company says that they their system does all on fours. I've got a case coming up where I'm using three different types of implants. We've got a standard implant, which I use for 80% of my cases at the front. We've got two zygomatic implants, and there's another company who make the best zygomatic implants in, in my opinion. And then we've got another company making the implants for the, the pterygoids, which go really far back. Again, there are safety features that that company has with their implant system, which other companies typically don't have. So we really customize stuff to improve patient safety and, and just make it a lot, make it comfortable as well. But being like this, means that I have to choose. Do I want to, to do things to the best of my ability or do I want to do things as cheaply as possible? And I would probably make more money if I did things as cheap as possible because that effectively becomes an all-on-four factory and we know that these all-on-four factories are doing really well. Okay, so anyway guys, that's a bit of a rant, but I just wanted to update you on, you know, how stuff is progressing. I, I think it's super exciting. Until next time, have a fantastic day and I hope to see you soon. Take care.